Afternoon, people. Um, I hope you're well. Welcome back to the channel. We thought we'd do a show today to discover and do, or uncover, should I say, everything that happened last night. A few disappointed gooners. Some gooners are fine with it. Some gooners don't care. Some gooners do. That's football. Um, but we're going to discuss it. We're going to talk about why we thought last night went wrong. Uh, I'm here with Lee Judges. Lee, let's get straight into it, mate. Um, I was going to have a moment, but I'm I'm not I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until you speak first. Sure, uh, sure. We spoke after the game uh, and uh, did a fan cam on FTV each, and were frustrated and passionate. And now that we've slept on it, and I say slept on it, I felt like I haven't slept to be honest with you. But um, we're up and we're looking at the draw and we're looking at what this might mean for Arsenal's future. How have your thoughts changed uh, on last night's um, disappointing result? Yeah, look, listen, I, I, my thoughts haven't really changed, you know what I mean? Disappointing result because we've lost, of course, you know what I mean? Like, I want to win every game. A couple of things have happened since then, you know. First and foremost, um, look, listen, my, my view is not going to change. I, I'm I'm happy for the manager to, ch to change the seam around, uh, make changes. I'm happy for that, but stick with them. That was my... my, my, my I would have been... If we'd have won last night with, with the same team... Uh, that we started with, I wouldn't have been a problem. If we would have uh, lost, say, and, and kept, you know, if we would have lost that game and, and Partey and Shaq, Saka didn't come on, I wouldn't have been disappointed, um, Dan. I would have I've accepted it. I, I, would, I would have accepted it whatever way. But what was a little bit annoying was all those, the changes. Like, if, you, if you're going to go, if you, if you really, really want to win the game, then start off with your best team and then go from there. Like if you if you if you if you want to make changes, uh, make changes. But you know, if the result don't happen, it don't happen. Like you know, and I think that's where I, where I'm really at of it. Like you know, I you know the injuries affected the game. Yeah, I didn't know about the Jesus thing. I didn't know about that. What a stupid rule that is. Like you've got to make a substitution. You know, from from that point of view, like that. You know, so. Uh, I I I I get that you know that so the Jesus one they had to bring off at half time for those reasons so you know I, I get that but listen I I think that at the end of it we've not played well at all in Europe then it's been a real mismatch of a performances all the way through Bodo away one nil you know what I mean Bodo at home I think it was two nil you know Zurich we was hanging on right at the end just to, to get into the top to top to top the group you know what I mean like it's just been one of those things where I think that it's been a little bit getting in the way of the situation. I get that we want to win it, and you know, I, I, uh, listening to a few people, I, I don't know what time you got home last night, Dan, but it was gone one o'clock in the morning time I got home. Trains and all that were a nightmare. So you know, when you make the effort and get there, of course you don't want to go and see them lose. Of course you don't. You know what I mean? But I felt that we, you know, if if we could win with the team that we started with, we should have gone with it. And I I, I felt that was a little bit of a a bad thing if I if I look back on it like you know we went one one and then like right okay let's get off Vieira let's get off um I say what Vieira was it let's get off Jorginho let's get off Nelson you know but telling them that they're not good enough sort of thing like you know give them the just give them the chance to see if they could work their way through it we couldn't do it uh and then we put everybody on and we end up losing it anyway like you know so listen so from that point of view disappointed disappointed with everything from that point of view today. Looking at the draw, Juventus and then Man United, we wouldn't be out of rest players in those games. It might affect us what we do in the Premier League. You know, our run of games would have been Liverpool away, Juventus away, West Ham away, Dan. You know what I mean? For those three games in a week, you've something's got to give. You can't play, you can't play. So I, I would have presumed that he'd have played a, a strong side against Liverpool, strong side against Juventus, maybe made one or two changes against West Ham because they're in Europe as well. Could come unstuck. Could come unstuck, you know. So, listen, West Ham have got, I think, are travelling to, to Ghent in their first, first leg. So, uh, I, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, I'll just check that out. If, that, if that's the case, it, it suits us that we're perhaps not in it, like, you know. And uh, from... from 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 my from my point of view, listen, it's all about winning the uh, the, the, the Champions League. I will say this about fans and all that, like you know, you can't criticise uh, Mikel without people going into one, like you know, and and also, you know, yeah, he's made he, he, whether he 
got it right or wrong yesterday. You can't be calling for his head and asking him to be sacked and slagging off players for, for it today. It's just one of those things. You can you make an opinion and say to yourself, right, well, I don't agree with this, don't agree. But let's not go all overboard about it either way, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can can criticise the performance. Yeah, you can criticise what Mikel done on this game. But we had to go overboard about it. And I think that's the trouble with our fan base. It does go a little bit, it's a bit bipolar, isn't it? <laughs> Mate, it's, I, don't, I don't know how to even understand it anymore, to be honest with you. On both sides, that is as well. People calling for his head is mad. But people that are screaming at each other because someone dared to question the team news, uh, team section might not have been wrong. Um, it's very bizarre. Very bizarre fan, fan base that we have, mate. Um, listen, this is my thoughts on last night. Um, all of last week, I was calling for us to play a strong side. When I saw the team news, um, I was disappointed with probably three positions. But other than that, it was OK. Uh, when I saw Ramsdale start, I was good with that. When I saw that uh, Tommy Asu was in, I was actually all right with it. I prefer Ben White, but Tommy Asu was in a shocker. Sinchenko playing, Gabriel playing, Saliba playing, I was happy with I didn't see Party, which annoyed me, and I didn't see Erdegaard, which annoyed me, and I didn't see Saka. But other than that, I thought it was fine. But actually, after 15, 20 minutes, I realised how good Party, uh, Party, Erdegaard and Saka are. And if we yeah. miss these three, wow, it's a downgrade on what we've got. Because Jorginho, I love him on the ball, but off the ball, really poor. The mobility or lack of is really... Um, you can really see they took advantage of that, particularly in the first half. Um, Reese Nelson was invisible throughout the game, in my opinion. And I thought that Fabio Vieira had a shocker. So those three positions were absolutely key for Arsenal last night. And we lost it in our midfield. Jorginho, Chaka and Vieira is possibly one of the most mixed match midfields that we mm. could have put in there. You cannot do that again. I don't want to see it again. It was awful. That midfield trio has to play. And that's where we actually lost the game last night, in my opinion, was our midfield. And I think it was a bit too late. And I heard you on your fan cam and I was kind of, you were so passionate that I was kind of understanding what you meant, but Robbie wasn't. Now, if you're going to make changes, that's not actually the issue. I wouldn't have done it. I'd like to have seen the full 11, first 11 cups go with it. But he's played them all anyway. He's ended up bringing them all on. That's, that's my point. Yes, yeah, a great point. Great he's brought point. them all on. We finished the game with our strongest team, allowed them all to play 120 minutes. Some of them have had to come on, so they've not played 20 minutes like he wanted. They've had to play a full 70 minutes. So why didn't we just start them, get the game won, Lee, and yeah. then take them off? So what I'm meaning by that is you play that 11 that played against Fulham. If you want to play Jesus or bring Jesus, some of the others into the mix, you do that when you go 2 or 3-0 up because we could have against them. They're a good side, but you don't look at them and go, don't see us scoring against these. That first 11 would have blitzed them, in my opinion, right? And then you take five of them off. Saka, off you come. Party, off you come. Jorginho, Nelson, on you go. Jesus, you can get some game time again. Trossard, you're going to come off and get a rest. And then Saliba, if you want to take one of them off, or one of the back lads on, you can do that as well. Then you make them five subs. I don't know why we didn't do that, Lee. And I think that's come to bite us in the backside now. Yeah, look, listen, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. If you're going if you, if to make changes... Then go the full 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 hog. If you're not, go what with what you said and, and do it that way, like you know. And I, I don't understand. It's not just Arsenal. It's not just a Mikel Arteta thing. You know what I mean? Spurs done it a couple of weeks ago. Other teams have done it. You know what I mean? Like and then like you know, you, in the end, you're chucking all your big guns on, and sometimes it gets you know gets through and it, it, it don't. I don't understand why um, that you do that. But my and I agree. You, you know, but. That, that's my problem with it, Dan, is that none of no, the end of the day, right? What he done was he mixed and matched to give players a rest, yeah. That that is we we agreeing on that. That's what that's yep. what he done, yeah. Yep. And none of them got a rest. <laughs> none of them got a rest last night. Every every none of the none of them in the end got a rest. And we didn't get the result. So it's a wrong decision, isn't it? In my eyes, it's wrong. You know, he made a mistake. So what? He's made a mistake, but you can't can't come out and say that without people going, you're negative, people coming out and yeah. saying you're this and you're that. that. I don't get that. I don't get that at all. Like, you know what I mean, like, um... and, and the thing is with that, Lee, as well, right, is if you said to Mikel now, would you rather play your first 11, be 2-0 up, take them off, play that 90 minutes a game, and the ones you don't want to play that much, they only play the 45, 60-minute mark, right? Or do you want to actually try and be arrogant enough and disrespect Sporting to try and win with four or five changes, 
get into extra time and penalties and have to lump them all on to try and win you the game. I'm sure he'd take the first option. Yeah, sure exactly. Would. Exactly. And, and, and you know, um, yeah. And, and from my point of view, like, you know, it didn't work. It didn't work. And I, I, I look at it and go, look, Sporting, by the way, really went for it. It was their, their main um, competition. They, they were they were really up for it, like, because they have not got nothing else, Dan, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I get that, you know. I, this, you know, like last week, he played Saka uh, out in Portugal. I would have thought, well, we'll rest him over there, like, you know. Uh, I honestly think that he thought, oh, the job was done. The job was done, you know what I mean? We've got them back at home now. We can get it done and all that. And then... I, if I was Mikel, I'm not. I'm not just looking at Mikel. I'm looking at some of the players as well, and I'm thinking, you know, right, Reese Nelson, you know, must be on cloud nine after the goal against Brentford. Played, re- come on, and done really well in that game, Dan. Yeah, really, Bournemouth, really well. Bournemouth, two, you mean? Yeah. Uh, sorry, against Bournemouth. Yeah, the two mm. starts that he's had since, he's done nothing. Mm. Been, been poor. Vieira, another one that's been poor. Jorginho, I thought done okay yesterday, like, but you know. He's going to always come under the pump because you're always going to be compared to party. It's, a, it's you know, I, I feel for him on that. That's wrong. Though. That's wrong, though. He shouldn't be. But, but you know, he is because, like, when party comes on, people go, oh, look at the difference when party comes yeah, on. Look yeah, what that's that that's facts. But we, no one's ever said Jorginho. Jorginho, sorry, has never said I'm a Thomas party. No, but, no. So I think know. that, you know, he, 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 he done okay there. He done okay there. You know, and the other thing is, Dan, you make these changes and these, these rests. We made... We made changes at um, Man City in the Cup and we lost Parse for it. You know, we've made changes today and we've lost Saliba for it. You know, so you're resting certain players and not others. Saliba hasn't rested in the last couple of games and now he's got injured. Why hasn't he come off, you know, like, you know, at the end of it? Why Why couldn't he, if you're going to rest players, why couldn't he have played holding today, uh, yesterday instead of, by the way, was our best player? And then, yeah. uh, and the other thing is... Um, Yes, I, I agree that Jesus needs minutes, but does Smith Rowe need? When's where's Smith Rowe going to get his minutes from now? Uh, he's finished now for the end of the season. He ain't going to, you know. what I mean, that was an ideal opportunity to bring him into yesterday and play him. Well, mate, I'm I'm sorry, but there's a couple of players I'm worried about at the moment. Um, Smith Rowe being one of them. Um, why is he so unfit? I don't understand it. Um, and what's Kieran Tierney got to do to get in this team? I mean, well, that's, the other, that's the other one. Like, he's off, know. mate. He is done. He is good boy. He is not a favourite. And um, Arteta didn't sign him, so he obviously don't want him. And um, I'm shocked because I thought he was provide unbelievable cover for Zinchenko, who, by the way, was all over the place yesterday. Yeah, um, poor. poor. Uh, playing at right wing back at one stage, right, right midfield. I mean, at one stage, I was wondering what was actually his actual position supposed to be and losing the ball, giving the ball away. Yeah. Poor. Um, but still no Kieran Tierney. I don't understand what he's done wrong. Maybe you can tell me that Lee, what has he done wrong? Tierney? Uh, do you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I honestly believe that he probably would have started in the game against, um, uh, sporting over there. Um, but I think that he's probably looking at win, trying to win the game. So he looks at a different option. I, I, I don't know that, you know, I, I look at, I look at Shinchenko and I think, yeah, he's a, a quality player and he's a player that we really, really need in the side and everything like. But there's a reluctance to leave him out of the side, right? Ben White is very, very intrigued to what we do. But he's well, he can't quite, wait to get him out. He can't quite, wait to yeah, get quite, him out. Quite willing to leave him out for Tommy Asu. Quite willing to do that, but not not for uh, Kieran Tierney. And I don't understand why. I don't understand why. The drop-off is not that bad. It's not that big, you know. I don't understand it. I really don't. Um, and if you're desperate to play um, Shinchenko, play him in midfield and give Shaka a rest and play Tierney. You could go down that route, Danny. He, he, but, it, you know, he doesn't seem to to, to want to do that. My biggest problem there is, if anything happens to Shinchenko, when was the last time Tierney played? I think he'd probably play a couple of games for Scotland, maybe get his minutes up. But... Um, it is a bit of a worry where you're going to get the minutes from. Look at Rob Holding yesterday. He's played more more minutes in the, in one game than he has all season. And he was suffering right at the end of that game. You know what I mean? You're going to have to ask him to go again on Sunday now, like, you know. Um, he was good as well, wasn't he? He was actually good, Holding. He was brilliant. I thought he was brilliant, like, you know. Uh, and fair play to him, you know. Like, and and he'd done really well. Uh, listen, you know, I, I think that 
Holding will come in and do a job for you on Sunday Fiesta alongside the other three because they're all good defenders. So I think he'll fit in okay. But, you know, listen, as bad as it was, Dan, I've looked back at it, you know, we should have we had the better chances. When you look at it, um, when you look at it uh, with, with Trossard, he should have probably scored. Uh, when he hit the post, we had a few chances. It, it just didn't happen like, you know. So um, we... we, we we have to accept, you know, I know what you said yesterday, that they was the better side. I think over the two legs, they probably didn't deserve to lose. Um, and perhaps I, I, I was quite impressed with them yesterday. I thought that they were better yesterday than they was so, over in them. Um, I thought they deserved them. to win. I thought they were the better side. Yeah. But, you know, uh, it wasn't a lot between it. And won the goal, got to say that, Dan. Won the goal. Won the goal. Oh, I mean, wow. I don't know. Ramsdale should have done better for that for me, really. I thought he could have come back and had that, but what a strike it was indeed. Yeah, um, I don't know, you know, what, what, what <coughs> sorts of, I've, I've seen a few people criticising him and all that. Like The penalties, I think the penalties people were criticising him for, he got nowhere near him and, and stuff. I, listen, whatever. I, I'm not going to blame a goalkeeper for going out of a competition on penalties. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. But for me, mate, I wanted to ask you this because this is a serious one. Someone asked me this last night and said, did we lose that game in the first leg or the second leg? And I thought, wow. What a great point. Because in that first leg, we conceded some shambolic goals. And I'm sure, I'm sure and certain that if Gabriel, Saliba and Ramsdale were playing in that first leg, we wouldn't have been 2-2. So I wanted to ask you that one, mate. That's a great question. It's a great question. You know what I mean? I, I thought we was poor, poor out in Lisbon. It was a poor game. I thought, you know, uh, like, like like all of our games, really, not been great. Um I I, I I can't put my finger on it. You make one or two changes. Listen, if you're playing Champions League football and, and, and Premier League football next season, you're going to have to make a few changes here and there and you've got to be able to um, handle it. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I, I've, uh, I'm going to say, like, you know what I mean? Like, Turner last week was, was poor. I think that he has actually dropped because he was that poor last week. I thought he was... Uh, you know, and I'm going to be, let's be really honest, Dan, if you're going to go into the, to the games against Juventus and, uh, and Manchester United, you've got to go with Ramsdale. You've got to go with Ramsdale. So, um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I think that maybe maybe the defensive frailties were were there uh, uh, last week. I, 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 listen, any time you get into Europe, though, and you're playing in Europe and you come back with a draw or a result, I don't think it's a bad thing. You put yourselves realistically, with one one game at home. I, uh, you know, none of this away goals rule now and all that. Like, I, I, I think, that, you they know... They get rid of that. They get rid of that when we need it and they take yeah, rid of it. We would have gone through, like, you know. So, yeah, and I just think that... I, I, you know what's more concerning for me than anything is our home form. I think it's shocking at the moment. Not shocking, but mm. if you... Uh, I, you know, we, we we're struggling at home. We're not. We're not. Yeah, we're it's not, never normally. That's not Arsenal. I know. Normally away, we've been struggling, but home. Yeah, I, I, do you know, I, I, I you know, uh, it wasn't a sure performance again yesterday. I felt that they always looked dangerous on the counter attack. You know, when we played F uh, Fulham on Sunday, you know, how sure was that performance from start to finish? Controlled, controlled. It's, it's not like that at home. It's not controlled at home. Do you think it's because, Lee, we go a little bit gung-ho, we get a little bit excited, the crowd's with us, I like, uh, and the crowd are amazing away, don't get me wrong, but it ain't the yeah. same as home because there's obviously more people. You get up and, and maybe they just lose their heads a bit. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to make an excuse, I suppose, for why we always can see goals. When was the last clean sheet we had at the Emirates? Can you even oh, remember? You know, it's a long while ago. And we, 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 we do leave ourselves open at, at home. And, you know, we're, we're conceding far too many goals at home. Far too many. You know, and we didn't really like, they didn't really create too much yesterday. It's just a wonder goal. But, you know, when you play against good sides, that's what good sides do. They have got, they will kill you off. And I think that that's a, you know, a problem. That, you know, if, for instance, if Sporting would have gone 2 new up against us yesterday, we wouldn't be coming back 3-2 with a last minute goal. You know, because they've got too much quality. Um, so, yeah, it is a bit of a concern. I, I, I feel that we... We put ourselves in a position by getting the draw there to 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 to, to see the job home at home, but we're not doing it. Our home form since um, going coming back from the World Cup's been been pretty. 
And what, what word can I use? It's not poor because you're getting results, but it's not been convincing. It's not been converted. Agreed, mate. You know, um, someone said today on, a, I was doing the Forever Arsenal today, and, and I think it was, uh, I'll prefer, I don't know if it was James or, or, or um, Jordan said, I prefer to take on, uh, or, I prefer to take on um, Newcastle, Liverpool and Manchester City at home. They're rather away. And I turned around and said, well, we've played two of them at home and ain't beaten them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, we've got to go. I, I, I'm a little bit more confident going away from home, Dan. I really am not. You know what I mean? I, I didn't Crazy, see isn't it. it. Can I well, that's, this... like, that's a good thing because we've got Liverpool City and Newcastle. Yeah. So, you know? When I was in Port Portugal last week, I never thought we was going to lose the game. Mm. Right? I did yesterday. It was at stages of that game. I said, "We ain't going to win. They're going to nick it. They're going to." I didn't feel like that. Even when we was two one up in Portugal, I felt we had another gear. I, I didn't feel that yesterday. I feel there's something not quite right with our home form. So uh, it's a great question for for me. You know, we set it up. It's like a game of tennis, isn't it? You set up set up to win the point, and we didn't take it. Yeah, mate, absolutely. Um, let me come to a couple of players um, last night. I'm going to start with the one that everyone's talking about today is not being good enough for Arsenal, bit of a Laconga, bit of a Nuno Tavage. Um, Fabio Vieira, um, I thought he was shocking, mate, last night. I thought he was really bad. And he's not a player I dislike. He's not a player I hate. I just don't think he's good enough. I've, I've got to be honest. I think he's weak. I think he's got technically gifted uh, feet and a good footballer, always on the floor. Can't, in my opinion, create much. I don't really see him as this assist king. He got 14 assists last season for mm. Porto. Don't see it now. Um, I've got to ask you, mate, what do you make of him? And do you think that we need to look at potentially him? Either we give him more time and loan him out, or we just think, no, this ain't going to work. What's just your thoughts? One, like, I just want to address this, what Ben said. Like, I've never liked Arteta. Go and have a look back at when he first came to the club and everything like that. I'm lauding him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, absolutely lauding uh, Mikel Arteta um, and when he won the FA Cup and all that. Like, you know what I mean? I've had reservations about what he's done um, when we go on unbeaten runs. Look, we're, he had an unbeaten run. Surprised he's going with you, not me. I thought he'd have a yeah, go with yeah, me here, yeah, but fair like, enough, mate. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I'm, I think I'm very, very impartial. Look, he, he went on a run that's got Patrick Vera sacked. Let's be honest, at uh, Crystal Palace. He's got oh, sacked. yeah. Facts. You know what I mean? Like, he would probably like worse. But what he's done, he's turned it around. And I'll I've, I've give him Arteta praise every like that. But listen, when he does something wrong, I am going to say, I'll call it out if I feel that he's done something wrong. Like if he does something right, I'm, I'm backing him 100%. It, Mikel has gone above and beyond this season. Like, and I'm not going to criticise him uh, uh, over, over, over a Europa League game. He's done fantastically well. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, I, and, I do like Arteta. Like, who, who couldn't not like? I tell you what, I'm jealous of the bastard. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it was a picture of him the other day, him and um, Jack Wilshire, and like, he's got. Not only has he got, is he good looking? He's got hair. He's a millionaire. He's got a fantastic bloody body and all like it's out of all the <laughs> like. You know I mean? So now, you, you know, what I mean, I'm, I've got a lot of time for him. Um, uh, you know, I mean, he's done wonders this season. Let's be honest, he's done absolute wonders. Going back to Vieira, I. The thing is with Vieira, I, I, I do see a player in him, Dan. I really do see a player in him. I do look what he's... Uh, um, I, I really do see a player in there. But um, I... I um, again, looking at it, what's his best position? No, you I know, don't. like play, plays in midfield, plays in the Udegaard role, plays out wide and all that. Like, you know, I, I, I'm going to sit right firmly on the fence with Vera at this moment and time and say to him, like, um, I'm, I'm looking at him and going to next season, I'll judge him a, a lot more. And it's very, very difficult for a player um, to keep coming in and out of the team, Dan. You know what I mean? Having one game and then coming back and then playing again. You know, he's never really had a run in the side, like, uh, and probably at this moment in time, you don't want him to, let's be honest, you know. But he's not had a run where he've had five, six, seven games uh, and, and then had a look at him. He'll he play one game, come out, play one game, come out. I think when it mattered against Brentford in the league game, he done OK. But I I, I don't think he's... So, gone on this, is my, this is my thing with him. I really like some of the things he's done so far. I really like some of his touches. I think he's made some great assists. I think he's got involved. 
but there's a lot of his game that I just go meh to. And I'm going to give you some names of players and I'm going to ask you, Lee, whether you think he is going to be as good as these players. All right. And these are the players over the years that have been fantastic at the club. Is Vieira, in your eyes, going to be a Nazri or an R. Sharvin? I don't see it. What do you do? You think he's going to be that? I don't think he's even that, and I don't even think they're anywhere near the Sanchez's and the and the um, uh, Santi Cazorla's and all this. So my point is, yeah, if he ain't going to be point. one of them, point. or he ain't going to be a Nazri or a Sharvin. You can't say he's better than them. Do we want him, or could we actually go loan him out and say let's go and get a Madison in, and then we actually do have someone who can cover for Erdegaard or be playing with him. That's my kind of where I want to be at Arsenal's next level in the summer is I don't want Vieira coming on. I want Madison or I want Madison there with her to God. Yeah. At the moment, I know Madison can play in that position. I don't know if Vieira can play anywhere at the moment in this Arsenal side. So that's what I'm getting at. So I really feel like there's a player in there. I'm with you that. But I don't know that he's suited to this league. I don't know that he looks strong enough to ever be suited to this league at this stage as well. Arteta says he doesn't want him to bulk up because it would affect the way he plays, whatever that means. So I think personally, it might be one we have to take a miss on. But I'm, I'm happy to be proven wrong. I'll compare it to this lad here. Me and Aria got this, haven't we, with Granite Chaka, right? <laughs> with Granite Chaka, the difference between Granite Chaka and Fabio Vieira is that Granite Chaka could actually play football. Granite Chaka had problems mentally with his ridiculous mistakes that I just couldn't forgive him for every single year, which he's now ironed out of his game, by the way. And, oh, so be it. He ain't a bad footballer anymore. I don't see Fabio Vieira as going to that next level, personally, and progressing. But, listen, I could be wrong. You know, I've been wrong a lot of times before with players and with managers and with football opinions. But at this current time, I think he might be one of the Danny Ceballos, Laconga, Tavares... Pablo Marie, Cedric type signings that just ain't really worked. That's my opinion, though, Lee. But I'm happy to be proven wrong. Yeah, I, like, you know, I, I'm willing to to, to 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 give him the benefit of that. Two 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 reasons. One, he's in a new country. Two, he's young. He's got all, all, all the um, rigmarole of changing house and doing all of that. Like now, some people sit and into it very very quickly. Others don't like you know. So. And I think physicality is also something to do with it as well. Like you know, I, I, I think the physicality of the Premier League shocked him a little bit. I, I really do. I do think for a, he gets stuck in though. I do, I, I do see him trying. Like I do see him working on. I don't see him shying out of tackles and things like that. But he's got to produce more. He's got to produce more. You know, I, I, I felt at times we was carrying him yesterday. Yesterday and. And I get what you're saying, like, you know. But at this moment in time, I think that he's a good squad player to have in and around the squad. Um, but I'm going to be really honest, Dan. Don't really want to see too much of him now. Yeah. No need, I mean, no need for it now, like, you know what I mean? So I'm totally with you there, mate. So I don't he's want to now, see uh, you know, his chances are going to be limited now. Um, and, and he's got, like, to bulk up and be ready for next season. And and I I, I think, like, I, I will judge him after you. Listen, Robert Perez, you know, I remember going back. If, if we had what we had now, everybody would have been going mad about Robert Perez after the first six months. You know what I mean? Was was poor. Um, I know it's different now and all that, but but he come through. If you have a look at all of our signings, Dan, that we've made this, this season and the last couple, like, right, you know, just, just go on it. Jesus, Shinchenko. Uh, Trossard, Jorginho, all been successful, and, and, and Vieira, right? So them five, all been successful. Four of them because they're Premier proven. They've been playing in the Premier League. He's the only one that hasn't. He's come from another country. And I think that the others have uh, 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 have hit the ground running, and he hasn't. And I think there's a little bit of it, that in there. Uh, so let's see what he does next season. And, and, and at this moment in time, he's not quite hit the heights I, I think that he should have done. Yeah, I think that's fair, man. I really do. Um, just before we move on to the weekend and what this means for Arsenal now going into the title race, um, who do you think is going to win the Champions League and who do you think is going to win the Europa League, Lee? I think the draw has been very, very good to us in the Champions League by putting Bayern Munich and then Real Madrid and Chelsea along with Man City. I think that's helped. So yeah. uh, um, that's going to take a lot out of whoever gets through 
through on that group, like, you know, um, the other group is a little bit easier, like the, down the other, you know, AC Milan, Inter Milan, Benfica are in there, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of the other team. Who's the other team? Anyway, not not, not so interested. But, like, um, I think that at the end of it, like, um, Manchester City got a tough, tough time if they want to... If, if Manchester City want to win that, that Champions League, they've got to go through the hard route. Four... Real, real tough games. The tougher, the better for us. Napoli's the other team, like, you know what I mean? So, I, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that uh, um, Napoli could be the, the, the team because uh, if they get through, like, AC Milan, which I think that they will, I, I, I you know, I don't think they're, they're going to be real, real tough, tough games, you know? So, um, listen, I think that, listen, from, from, a, from my point of view, I want, uh, Ace, uh, Man City to knock out Bayern Munich after two two tough games and then take on Real Madrid and get done in the last kick of the game. Wouldn't the that be beautiful? Month. Wouldn't that yeah, be beautiful? Like, um, like and hopefully by then we'll be about <laughs> eight ten points clear. Like you know, that's 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 the dream. That's the dream, mate. Um, I went for Real Madrid. Um, to win still the going for Real Madrid. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I went for him, and I'm a bit one one of these guys who has to stick with stuff really. But if I was to change my mind, I would go Napoli. I would. Um, I've been so impressive with them, mate. The way they're playing football is exceptional. And I want their centre forward like so badly. Um, he looks incredible, mate. Oz man. Absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, so I would do that. Europa League, now that we're out, I couldn't give a monkeys if I'm honest. Um, I'm going to say it. Roma. Yeah, Joe, Joe, just say it. I just think that Roma have got, a, again, like a nice little bit of a, you know, like... Uh, Juventus and Man United is going to be a, a big game if if uh, if Juventus get through and, and Manchester United. I would suspect that they probably will. You know, like I look at that game with Juventus. Juventus can't looks like they're not going to get in the Champions League other than the, the Europa League. So that's going to be a tough, tough game if we'd have got through there. So it'd be a tough game for Man United. I just think again, them two teams bashing each other about just leaves a little door open for for Roma. So I'm with you on that. And if 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 Roma were managed by anyone different, I probably wouldn't go for him. But you know what he's like. He's won the Conference League last year. He's won yeah. somewhere everywhere he's gone. He knows how to win that competition. I don't like the bloke, but I, I fancy him, to be honest. Um, so that's that. Um, listen, what are your thoughts going into this weekend, Lee? Like, is this actually going to cause some upset for Arsenal now? Um, I said to Cecil on my fan cam last night that the last time we went out in a cup competition, we couldn't beat Everton, we couldn't beat Brentford, couldn't beat yeah. Man City. Um, do you fear that again against Palace Leeds and Liverpool? No, because we're at home. I, 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 I'll, I'll be really honest with you, Dan. And I'm not being dramatic about it and everything like that. If we don't win one of these, if we don't, if we don't beat uh, Palace and we don't beat Leeds, we will not win this league. Facts. I we have to win these two games. We have to win our home games. We cannot afford, with the likes of Liverpool away, Newcastle away, uh, City away, we cannot afford to slip up at home. No more. Our home games are all winnable. Chelsea, I know, is a tough one. Uh, we've got Brighton. We've got Southampton. We have got to now every single home game and then Wolves, the last game of the season. They're, they're, they're tough games, but realistically, for, for home games coming into the the running into the season, you take every each and every one of them, like you know what I mean. Now, Manchester City, if you look at their running, Dan, they're not going to drop too many points. They've got Chelsea away and um, Liverpool at home and us, you know what I mean. So they've got three tough games as well, but you would expect them to win out all those other games. So we have to win our home games, we have to put the pressure on. I think that we'll beat Crystal Palace, but I think it'd be very, very tough. I think they've done us a favour by getting rid of Vieira. I think that they're. I think that it's it's beyond the joke what they've done there. Not because I'm a Patrick Vieira fan and all that. They're playing for him. I just watched them at the other uh, uh, the other day give Manchester City a, a real big test. I see them beat a uh, draw with Man United a couple of weeks ago. They've drawn with Liverpool. They've only just lost them. Um, they lost to Brighton, but they, that, like, they should have scored in they that game. Like, in, 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 I, I, have, I think it's a silly decision. I understand yeah. why they've got rid of him, because it's a results business. I get it. They ain't won a game yeah. in 2023. They ain't scored goals. They've had that shot on targets. I get it. But look at that league table and tell me why Crystal Palace should be somewhere different. Because I look at the teams below them and the teams ahead of them, and I'm thinking, aren't they about where they should be? 
I mean, like they're flirting with relegation, don't get me wrong. But mm. Zaha's just come back. Eze's now back in the side. I rate Elise. If they could get one of their forwards scoring, which is what they ain't been able to do, yeah. they could be up there again. So I don't know, man. I find it a bit bizarre. Who are they going to get now? They could be in a relegation scrap now. Yeah, well, they're not going to get no one better than him. You know what I mean? They was in the cup semi-final last season. You know what I mean? Like, short memories. Short memories. And at the end of the day, if Palace go and uh, their next few games, uh, we were saying about this earlier on, that are, are all winnable games, you know what I mean, after Arsenal. So if they if they were to win two or three games, they'd end up being about 12th, 13th in the league. Where do you expect Palace to be? You know what I mean? Like, um, I think there's so much disrespect come out of that. But there you go. That's That's their decision. Um, and um, at least you know, there might be a new manager bounce, mate, for us because well, you, you know, know I, like... don't think, I don't think you know within two days it will make, make, make too much difference if I'll be honest. And uh, the, the, you know, when you say about this manager, I, I, I think at the end of the day, this could have a different effect on them because I think that those players were playing for him. I don't think there's any question about it. I didn't see the one thing I, I felt again when I was watching the Man City, they were running around, working really hard, buying into the system and things like that because you can tell. Like now, they might actually think, well, oh, you know, it was a bit out of order. I really liked him, mm. blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know. It could work two ways. I think this could be a bad thing for, for Palace. I really do like, you know what I mean? So uh, we'll wait and see. I think they've, they've panicked a little bit too much there, really, like, you know. But you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Patrick might have been a bit, um, what's the word, disappointed about what's happened in the transfer. He certainly wasn't backed in January, was he? Like, didn't get him what he mm. wanted in January. I don't, you know. Got Laconga in on loan. I don't think they bought anybody. Um, so we'll, we'll wait and see. So um, for me, like, you know, I, I think that may play into our hands a little bit on on uh, on Sunday. So uh, mm. listen, I don't care how we do it, Dan. We just got to yeah. get the result. Three points, mate. Three yeah. points indeed, man. Um, big time. Listen, we've, we go into that game um, with the first game of one game a week. Um, yeah. I mentioned this to you earlier, and I think it's important. We need to play our strongest 11 every game now, Lee. Like we 100%. Have to... 100%. You called it you, when you when were you talking to me earlier on. Uh, and that's why I said I don't want to see Vieira now. Like, might come on as a sub and all that. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, when fit, that, 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 that get Jesus back in as soon as possible. Or maybe one one game left. I, I'd probably play Trossard. In this game, and give a, uh, uh, but but to say that Jesus looked quite sharp yesterday, and then you just play your, your you know Saka now, uh, Martinelli, they're, they're your two wide players that don't change. The midfield don't change. Don't forget after this, as you say, I think we've only got one midweek game after this, which is Manchester City. Now, yeah, if I'm right. Well, South, Southampton's Friday night. That Friday will stay, night, that will night, stay now. Home. That'll that stay, stay now. now. Because, yeah, that'll uh, stay, yeah. So, so like, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they knew like we were that. going out, Lee, already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, that was a Friday night, you know, um, Friday night out. Um, but where could still be now, can't it? Like, uh, you know, so, uh, listen, uh, you know, we play Friday and then we got, I think it's South, we don't play then to the following Saturday or Sunday. So, you know, look, we've got days where we can have breaks, rests, rest players. Uh, they can have a couple of days off, you know what I mean, work on certain things and all that. Like, it may be a blessing, Dan. It may be a blessing, like, you know. Well, I, I mean? hope it will be. Um, because I did get a message earlier about their fi the fixture pile up list now, and I'm not really one to go in on that because for me, it's it's I wanted to be in it, you know what I mean. But, um, yeah. a good friend of mine, shout out Dan Gunning, he said, Oh, look at this fixture list, and I think you mentioned this earlier. And on the 9th of April, we have Liverpool, then midweek, Juventus, then the weekend, West Ham. And of course, Juventus in the midweek after that. Then we've got Southampton, and then we would have had Man City midweek, and then Chelsea. So that is basically um, three or four days rest in between seven games in twenty days. That would have been yeah. So Absolutely. you know, I know it's horrible, and I hate it. I don't want to be out of this competition, and I can't stress that enough. But when you're looking at positives now, one game a week, first eleven. It's the best chance we've got of keeping this team fit is by playing. Hundred percent. And and Dan, as you as we proved against Fulham, when we got that eleven out there, it's as good as anything I've seen. Yeah, I mean, like it's the best team in the league at this moment in time. That's why we're top. So the thing is now preserve that eleven, make sure that it's there every week, uh, and and I, and I think we've come very very close to winning the league. I, I I would say this, you know, what I mean, like one of those games you would have looked at and thought, right, we're going to have to. 
We're going to have to rotate. We may have to rotate against Brighton and um, West Ham, Southampton. They're all fighting for their lives for one different for different reasons and all that, like you know. And we could come unstuck. The fact of the matter is now we're going to be fully focused on every single league game. There's no excuses now. No excuses. Not saying we want an excuse, but you know. Arteta now just plays his strongest team every week now. Like he hasn't got a, and I, and I think someone said this on Twitter today. Um, he hasn't he, his record of uh, changing the maintaining the squad isn't isn't as great because if you look at the cup cup runs we've lost in cups and things like that. But when it comes to playing his strongest eleven week in week out like he's done in the league, he's got it spot on. So keep getting it spot on, Mikel. Keep getting it right. Let's keep getting the three points and let's win this bloody league. Because I'll tell you what, like, you know what I mean? At the beginning of the season, I was, yeah, like, you wrote the league and fourth, you know what I mean, is what I was saying. Like, you wrote the league and top four. Because I never, ever felt we was going to be challenging for the title. That's all changed now, Dan. And that's a credit to the manager, credit to the players. We are in a title challenge and I'd rather be in a title challenge than, uh, say, six in the league, looking forward to Juventus away. End of facts, absolute facts. Um, if we don't win the league, Lee, some are saying it's a failure, some are saying it's um still a good season but disappointing. Where do you stand on this? Because I find it, it I think it's a definition thing for me. By saying it's a failure doesn't mean oh my god, sack them all, they're all clueless. Um, what it means is you failed to win something, which would actually be a fact. So it is a fact, it will be a failure in terms of that. But I don't think we have to lose our heads and start sacking people. If we go in for a title challenge and we miss out, I don't think I want any of them to be sacked for that. And no, it won't be no. a huge failure, a disappointment of a season. What would be annoying is that we haven't won anything again and we're trophyless. But um, we went in for a title challenge. We're back in the Champions League. We go again in the summer with a transfer window that I think needs to be backed. And then we go and try and win it again. So where do you stand, man? Oh, I, look, I'm going to be really honest. If we win, the, if we don't win the league, I'm going to be... Devastated, disappointed it, because yeah. b- because we've got a great chance of doing it and we're in a very very good position. Like you know, you said a great thing on your fan cam yesterday. Like you know, um, you know this team deserves to win something, and it does. We don't deserve to be coming out potless at the end of this season because we've done really well. But if we do come potless out of this season, a little bit down to of what we've we've tried to maintain um, our, our title challenge because that's the main thing. For me, Dan, I've always said it. There's no divine right to win the league. There's no divine right to win a a trophy. What I've always wanted uh, is a challenge. And I and that's what they've given me this season. So for me, yes, whatever happens, you know what I mean. I think it's been a success because we challenged for the title. Whether we can win it or not, let's face it. At the beginning of the season, if I'd have said to you, "We're going to challenge Man City all the way with a title," you'd you'd have said, "No, no, no." But but, but now I'm going to say it, Dan. A year ago, this time last season, I don't care about Manchester City's results. I don't care whether they won, lost or drawn. Now I am. The reason is because Arsenal were on a title challenge, and I'm really looking forward to it. Every game, you know, let's, let's face it, like yesterday's game, I wasn't nowhere near as nervous as what was for the league game. I'm going to be petrified for that game on sat- Sunday because there's so much riding on it. And bring it on, bring it on the following week as well, bring it on the next week because we're in a title challenge. And I'll tell you this now if we don't win it, okay, we don't. But I'll tell you what, I'd rather be where we are challenging for it than not at all. Uh, and I've had, we've had 19 years where we've been really like never challenging for it. And I believe now this is the best time we have of, of, of challenging for it. And and that's all I ever asked for, Dan. So I, when, when I'm, um, if we don't win it, I'm going to say, oh, blah, blah, blah. Because all through my time, I said all I've ever wanted was a title challenge. That's tight, challenging for the title every year. And that's what they're doing. So for me, I'm proud of my team this season. I'm proud of the manager. I'm proud of, of the players and I shall get there on Sunday despite this disappointment, despite, you know what I mean, whether you think it's right or wrong over um, team selections and whatever and cheer on the Arsenal on Sunday, hopefully to three points because it's massive. Fair play to you, man. Listen, uh, before we f- uh, finish off with a super chat, I'm going to ask you for your starting 11 for Sunday that you would go with and your prediction, Lee. Well, up starting on that is uh, Ramsdale in goal. Um, Ben White right back, Holding and uh, Gabriel uh, left back, um, Shinchenko. Obviously, like I'm saying that because if Saliba's fit, he plays. But if he's not, you know, Holding can come in there and do that job. Uh, uh, somehow, you know, I mean, Shaka, 
Ulegaard and Partey. And up front, I am going Martinelli, Trossard and Saka. Wow. What about your prediction? 2 nil. Love it, man. Love it. Um, I'm the same team as you. I think Saliba will be fit. Um, they're saying it's like back spasms or something, so hopefully he'll be all right. Um, Is that what they said it was? Yeah, apparently he was watching them penalties, like, like sort of not in the huddle, but huddled on the bench. He was standing there um, watching. Unless you've heard something different. No, then, I haven't. No, I, don't, I, don't, um, I, haven't, heard nothing, I haven't heard anything. That's so. what I was told. It was back, something to do with his back spasms or something like that. And uh, he couldn't continue, had discomfort. So he come off, which is, to be fair, the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, so hopefully they can give him some treatment and he'll be fit for Sunday. Same team as you. I wouldn't start Jesus. Um, I would bring him on because I, I, I think Trossard deserves to start. And that, I yeah. thought that front three was outstanding against Fulham. So I'm going to leave it like that with you. And I'm going to go Arsenal 3, Palace nil. I think Great. we will blitz them because I think we have to come back in style. And I think we'll do it, mate. I really do. Um, what I like. Yeah, man. Optimism. Let's do it. You know, we've been down in the dump, so we get it. I understand it. None of us are happy with that, are we? Uh, Mike says, I think Mikel has earned next season. However, if he fails to win the league this year and doesn't win a major trophy next season, then he should be sacked. Listen, if this board aren't going to sack him for coming eighth, eighth and fifth, then trust me, they ain't going to sack him for coming no, second. I, I and second. Um, I, I, it is I, I, harsh I, I, because of what, what we've seen this year and how things have turned yeah. around and how many people he's proven wrong. So, um, yeah, man, I'm not sure. I, 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 one one thing I will say is that I think that he's going to have to have a little look at how, how he um, addresses the cup competitions next season. 100%. I do believe that. He's got to start. We've got to start uh, looking to win some trophies. Yeah, 100%, man. I'm I'm with you there. And I do I do find it funny because there are some that don't see, they see them getting in the way. That's why I got annoyed when we... No, 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 no. Oh, come on, no. come on. Maybe this season because the squad ain't strong enough. I'll get that, you know. But listen, if you, you said like you was going to go out of all the cup competitions early and win the league, you'd Bit your hand, bite anybody's hand off at the beginning of the season. So, but yeah. next season, you know, listen, that's what good teams do, Dan. You know, what I mean, they win the league and they go right. I want to. What's next? Well, win the league and the Champions League and the cup. We, you know, we got to keep going. Like, um, we got to keep doing uh, winning and winning and winning. Like, you know what I mean? So that's what we've got to do. You know, uh, build on this this season. Win this, win this league. Somehow get through, and then. Um, uh, over these next 10 games. But listen, what I will say to everybody is enjoy these 11 games. If bloody enjoy them, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather be where we are now than languishing in eighth, looking looking at uh, hopefully trying to beat Brighton 2-1 on a, on, a, on a bank holiday Easter, like, you know what I mean? Like we did a couple of years ago. Let's go in there and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Come on, you gunners. Facts, Lee. Absolute facts. Listen, people, thanks for watching. Um, smash a like on your way out, people. Get us up to 35 to 40k as quickly as you can by hitting a subscribe. It's absolutely free. And all it does is click two buttons and it does the world of good for myself and Mr. Lee Judges. Lee, always a pleasure, mate. I'll see you on Sunday. See you um, Sunday, mate. And hopefully we can hope for three points. Until then, see you next time and up the Arsenal. Take care, guys. <laughs>